Hello everyone, it's Kamal and well, today we're gonna go over a list of applications that, as a photographer, make my life so much easier. Now, this video isn't about smartphone photography, if you want that, well, it's right above me, there. <laughs> and well, let's jump right into the list. Now, the first app I want to talk about is LD, or Lens Distortions. I've been using this app for a while, maybe like two to three years, and it has helped me so much in achieving some pictures on the go and really easily. This app basically lets you add overlays to your picture, which are basically refraction items, lens flares, light, a very warm light, very cold light, even add some effects of like snow or rain. And at first it might seem a bit tacky because it's literally like an app with PNG overlays. But once you learn to actually properly use it, it's really useful and you can get some really nice images with it. Like these, for example. As you can see in these pictures, I added light and on the second one, I added fake snow. Now, it doesn't look the most realistic with the snow, but it fits the picture, so it works. The second app I want to talk about might seem a bit expected, but it's VSCO. And I'm talking about the membership version. VSCO has saved my ass so many times simply because as many presets that you have on Lightroom or as much time you have on Lightroom, sometimes there are some sort of specific looks that you have to do really quickly. And also with the membership, you can actually color video on the go. So when I'm not at home with my computer and everything and I need to color grade a video really quickly, I can just snap on a VSCO filter on it and it's really practical. And you know, the membership is pretty cheap for all the things you get, like the list of VSEO presets. And again, they're not like Lightroom presets. They contain way less data and everything, but it's very practical for on-the-go pictures. I mainly use it to edit my smartphone pictures rather than my camera pictures, but still pretty good in a pinch. And still, you can deny the capability of adding very quick video filters on the go that make your videos look good when you don't have the time to sit on the computer and actually grade them. The third application I'm going to talk about is a bit different, but I think that if you don't have this application, you're not taking advantage of your camera software. The third application I want to talk about is the dedicated camera app for your camera. In my case, it's the Fuji app, but in your case, it might be the Sony or the Canon or the Nikon or whatever. But this lets you do three things. First thing it lets you do is actually transfer photos on the go without needing an SD card reader. And this is a huge win. Let's say you're on the field and everything, you're actually snapping pictures. Wait, let's fix that. Doing your thing, you're up with your camera, you're capturing pictures and everything, you know, taking the photos. You don't have time to fiddle around with messy adapters and cables and SD card readers and everything. You know, you just open your phone, turn on the Wi-Fi, connect to your camera and boom, you're transferring pictures. But another cool thing the application lets you do, or grants to you the ability to do, is to connect to your camera from a distance and actually control it. So with your smartphone app, you can actually set focus, ISO, shutter speed, and everything. And this is really good for two kinds of people. YouTubers, like if you want to set up everything from a distance and can't really micromanage everything since, you know, you're actually in your videos. Or it's even more useful now that we have COVID and everything, it's kind of hard to see people or get help for photos and videos, so to take self-portraits, or you know, film yourself, it has lots of uses, it's very practical. And so I truly recommend getting the dedicated application for your camera. The last app I want to talk about is, you know it, Adobe Lightroom or Lightroom Mobile. Now, the three th interesting things with this app is that first of all, it offers you most of the computer features for free. Which is really good simply because sometimes as a photographer you don't have income from photography and so it wouldn't be smart to invest in professional software for it until you actually have a proper income from it. So getting Lightroom on your smartphone is actually a pretty good trick. But let's say you do have the Creative Cloud subscription. Well, using Lightroom on your phone is even better because you can synchronize everything with your computer. So let's say you have those really sick presets that you use to get some really good pictures. Well, everything's synchronized. So as long as you know how to properly use the app, you're on the go, you take your pictures and everything, you can literally use the same settings that you use on your computer directly on the app. And the last thing that it lets you do is all these detailed granular edits that you might get in applications like Google Snapseed, for example. But you know, having everything in Lightroom is a way better package because I never use Snapseed for actual coloring, I use it for more like editing. And so when I go back to Google Snapseed, it's more maybe to composite something or whatever. But staying on Lightroom, it's really good. Everything is about color, everything is about granular details of visuals of photography. So you know, if you don't use Lightroom at all, I'd really recommend trying it out. And so that wraps it up. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this shorter video. 
Tell me in the comments down below which one of the apps you like or what video you want to see next. But that's it for me. I'll hopefully see you in the next one. Make sure to smash the like button and I'll see you in the next video. Peace out guys.